Everyone seems to want the current lockdowns to end. I mean, who'd want to stay locked inside, not being able to visit friends and family and unable to progress with normal life? But there is hope, and considering it's 2020, no one would be surprised to hear that that hope comes in the form of tracking technology. So in this video, we're going to explain how coronavirus tracking technology works. The model that's being proposed by Apple and Google, the one that's favoured by the NHS in the UK, and why this tech could allow countries to open up once again. If you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to the channel for more explainers and news updates. And if you want to support the channel, you can help us through one-off donations, information about how, and a full explanation about our funding can be found below. Coronavirus tracking technology is based on far more rudimental, more manual methods used in previous viral outbreaks. The idea is to take standard manual contact tracing and make it simpler, quicker and more accurate by using modern technology to aid the effort. But what is contact tracing all about? Well, contact tracing is a concept that's been used many times before to track and slow the outbreak of infectious diseases. The basic idea is that when someone finds out they've been infected, they contact everyone else who they've been in contact with, especially prolonged contact, letting them know about the infection, telling them to isolate and to test themselves. So if you find out that you've had a virus, you'd ring a whole bunch of people that you've been close to recently and that you could have infected. The practice is also used outside of epidemics too, with contact tracing often used to warn people about the spread of STIs. There's a couple of problems when it comes to traditional contact tracing though. Firstly, you can't expect everyone to remember exactly who they've been in contact with recently. Let's be honest, how easy would it be for you to compile a list of everyone you've been in contact with? Your family, your friends, your colleagues, your workout trainers, your parishioners and everyone else. The bigger problem is all of the people you don't even know. You might be able to name your friends and colleagues, but what about the person you sat next to on the tube, the guy you sat next to at the dentist, or the receptionist who helped you check into a hotel? The number of people you come into contact with and could have infected is huge, and many of those people you don't even know, which makes traditional contact tracing very difficult. If only we carried mobile tracking devices with us at all times. If only those devices could pinpoint our GPS location, interact with other devices and store tons of data in virtual cross-referenceable databases. I'm sure I don't need to hammer this point home any harder because with 95% of you watching us on your phones, I think you get my gist. The basic idea of mobile tracing is that instead of keeping a long list of people you've been in contact with, including those you don't even know, your phone does it for you. The exact method depends on who's implementing the system, but the core idea is that your phone exchanges data with those around you so that you have a comprehensive list of every device that's been near you in recent days. Now, the system isn't foolproof. For one, it assumes that everyone has a phone on them at all times and that every phone has the software activated. But the hope is that the new system will work better than manual contact tracing. So let's take a look at two models of coronavirus contact tracing technology, discuss how they'll work, as well as the advantages and disadvantages of each method. Let's start with the approach suggested by mobile tech giants Apple and Google and then discuss the version that NHS X has proposed using in the UK after rejecting Apple and Google's approach. As two of the biggest companies in the world, I'm sure I don't need to introduce you to Apple and Google. With the two companies controlling the software inside 98.92% of the world's mobile devices, these two are better placed than almost anyone to develop a protocol which allows their own devices to track and trace COVID-19. So what did the Silicon Valley giants come up with? Well, their answer is the Exposure Notification API, and it was released to developers last week. And based on Apple and Google's own slides, here's how it works. If two people, here called Alice and Bob, come into contact with each other, their devices connect via Bluetooth and share an identifying key. This key changes every 15 minutes to protect individuals' privacy. Bob then finds out a few days later that he has the virus, so he goes into the app and pushes the last 14 days worth of keys onto a server which contains all of the keys of infected people. Alice's device regularly downloads data from this server and checks if any of the keys it's collected from nearby people match those on the infected keys database. 
and when Bob pushes his keys to the server, Alice's device spots a match. At which point, Alice's app notifies her that someone she's been in contact with is infected, as well as giving her advice from her local health authority and information about how she can get tested. Apple and Google say that this is the best protocol to handle the crisis, but people still have a number of concerns about how it works, most notably related to tracking, location, advertisers and false positives. So let's run through them quickly. Firstly, tracking. Understandably, many people are concerned about the privacy implications of this software. There's a whole bunch of conspiracy theories bubbling under the surface when it comes to COVID, from the idea that 5G caused it all, to the theory that Bill Gates invented the virus himself as an excuse to inject us all with microchips. And compared to those, the idea that tracking software like this could be introduced under the pretense of public health before just becoming part of daily life doesn't seem all that out there. The good news is that if this were the government's plan, Apple and Google's approach isn't a great fit. Because when it comes to tracking you, Bluetooth tracking methods like these are on the less invasive end of the spectrum. As I explained moments ago, efforts have been made to ensure anonymity, from the regularly changing key that your phone broadcasts to the anonymous key uploads made to the centralised servers. The system's not perfect, and the former chief technologist of the Federal Trade Commission has come up with a good example of how someone could use surveillance cameras to try and identify those who are infected. But the example he gives is far from an easy process, and as Apple and Google have pointed out, if someone was willing to go to that much effort, they could just set up cameras outside testing centres. There certainly are privacy flaws in Apple and Google's plans, but it does seem about as secure as is possible. Which also goes some way to satiate people's concerns related to location data. When the idea of technological contact tracing was first introduced, some were concerned that it would lead to people's location being tracked constantly. Not so with this solution. As I've explained, Google and Apple's approach uses Bluetooth, and as such, doesn't require any form of GPS tracking. Others worry about the implications when it comes to advertising. The idea being that advertisers could game the system in order to sell products directly to those who are infected. This idea was suggested by Matthew Green, a cryptographer at John Hopkins University. However, Green was quick to shoot down his own idea, saying that the system that's been suggested by Apple and Google will be very hard for advertisers to manipulate, and even if they did, the data it provided wouldn't be all that useful. Others have also noted that considering the vast number of other shady tracking methods that advertisers already use, it wouldn't be worth the PR nightmare that could come with abusing the COVID tracking system. Finally, what about false positives? It is a real concern that if the system doesn't work as planned, if it notifies too many people, people you weren't even close to in the first place, it could risk undermining the system entirely. If people learn that the warnings are often untrue, then users will stop trusting it and stop heeding the warnings that they're being provided with. The solution suggested by Apple and Google is to implement a system whereby healthcare providers give patients a unique key when they've been diagnosed to mark them as infected. This key would then be used in the app, meaning that trolls couldn't light the system up with false positives. The system still isn't perfect from this perspective, with some concerned about Bluetooth signals passing through walls, which the virus obviously can't. But Google and Apple say that their technology works to prevent this, and ultimately, all systems have flaws, even the standard manual tracking approach. Their method is just designed to do the best job possible under the constraints. The greater issue with this is that Apple and Google's solution is only an API. For those of you who aren't super into tech, API stands for Application Programming Interface, and for those of you who are even less into tech, think of it as a basic blueprint. Apple and Google aren't making an app or a system that your government can use. Instead, they provide a basic interface, which governments can use to develop their own apps and systems. This might seem good if you trust your government more than these tech giants, but it could also mean that governments, misguidedly or maliciously, go against Google and Apple's privacy advice. It could lead to governments collecting more data than is necessary, or asking for accurate location data to pinpoint cases better, ignoring the privacy concerns associated. Which means that as interesting as Apple and Google's advice is, it's only advice. 
To properly judge the systems, you'll have to look at every system that individual governments will be rolling out over the weeks and months ahead. One government rolling out such system is the UK's National Health Service. However, the UK won't be using a system based on the Google and Apple model. Instead, NHSX will be producing their own variant. Like the Apple and Google approach, the NHSX app will use Bluetooth to work out who you've been in contact with recently and track connections. However, unlike the Google and Apple approach, the NHSX app will use what's called a centralised model. Instead of swapping anonymous keys and all of the cross-referencing happening privately on the user's device, the NHS X model would see all of this happening on a centralised database. This means that when someone's diagnosed with COVID-19, the NHS database would then send a notification to everyone they could have infected, as the centralised system would know who they'd be near. The government says that one of the advantages is that it's easier to audit the system and adapt more quickly as the scientific evidence accumulates. But tech experts are concerned. They say that such a centralised system could be used to track specific individuals and their social interactions. Instead of all the processing happening privately on the user's device, it's being stored on a centralised server, which could be manipulated by governments or even hackers. It's because of this that Apple and Google recommended the decentralised approach in the first place. And it's also why a whole number of countries are rolling out decentralised systems. Germany initially used a centralised system like the one being pushed by NHS X. But over the weekend, Germany announced that they were moving to a decentralised approach. Which leaves the UK and France pretty much alone on the centralised side of things in Europe. And in France, hundreds of security experts have signed a letter asking the government to change their mind. On top of the security concerns, the NHS X solution requires the app to wake up in the background of your device every time it comes into contact with another user. By contrast, Apple and Google's method doesn't require any such activation, saving the battery life of devices using the app. On top of the battery drain, there's also concerns that the NHS X approach might not work effectively when other apps are using Bluetooth and location services, something which isn't a concern under the Apple and Google model. Regardless, the UK appears to be pushing forward with a centralised approach, with testing starting in the Isle of Wight today. What do you think of these tracing apps? Do you think they're an invasion of privacy or do you trust the governments and tech firms that their methodology will keep your identity safe? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more updates as this situation plays out and you can hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers whose support makes videos like this one possible.